We are one series into the 2024 regular season and already narratives are starting to form around the Toronto Blue Jays. We saw some really good things from this team in that Tampa Bay Rays series, especially in game one and game four, where the Toronto Blue Jays were just stringing hits together and coming up clutch. On the flip side of things though, in game two and three, it looks like you could have struck this team out with a beach ball. So it was a mixed bag. Ultimately though, I think that we can say safely say that a split at Tropicana Field is always a positive outcome and there is definitely something to build off of from this series. However, there was one thing this weekend that the Toronto Blue Jays just did not have an answer for and if they don't address it soon, then it could become a big problem. What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this one folks, we are going to be talking about that issue that was plaguing the Toronto Blue Jays against the Rays all series and the implications that it may have moving forward. Before we do, I encourage you guys to hit the like and smash the subscribe button if you enjoy Toronto Blue Jays content and discussion so you don't miss any future videos. All right, folks, let's get into it. So if you clicked on this video thinking that I was gonna hate on Bo Bichette's defense, then I am sorry to disappoint you, but that's not what we're gonna be talking about today. It is still way too early to be getting on Bo for his defense, especially considering last year he was pretty decent in the field. And actually, that is a great segue to just remind mind everybody that it is still very early on and some of the problems that the Toronto Blue Jays were struggling with in that series against the Rays there is still tons of time to solve them hell I'm recording this before the first game against the Astros so who knows maybe the Toronto Blue Jays come out and just look completely different and solve the problem that I'm about to talk about making this video a completely moot point either way the problem that I noticed that the Toronto Blue Jays kept dealing with all weekend long and just did not have an answer for was the Tampa Bay Rays stealing bases. <laughs> I love stealing. I love taking things. Simply put, the Toronto Blue Jays could not stop the run. In that series against the Rays, the Blue Jays were able to catch one guy stealing, and it was on this play right here. As you can see, Alejandro Kirk fires it to Biggio, but he throws it extremely wide. Biggio does an incredible job of not only keeping it in the infield, but also applying the tag on the runner's foot and ultimately getting the out. Either way, though, this play was far from textbook, and in another other reality, that ball flies past Biggio, and now the runner's gonna be at third. In total, the Tampa Bay Rays stole six bases and were only thrown out by the Toronto Blue Jays once, so not a great statistic. Now, I'm not the only one that feels this way because Joe Siddle and the guys over at Blue Jay Central did a great piece on all of this, which I highly recommend you check out, but one thing that they highlighted is that both Alejandro Kirk and Danny Jadson are currently in the bottom percentiles when it comes to caught stealing percentage. They flashed up this chart, which shows that Kirk and Danny are both relatively similar with how they handle stolen bases, but it needs to be noted that those numbers aren't extremely competitive at the major league level from either of them. And this is something that the Toronto Blue Jays are going to need to address. If me, a Blue Jays YouTuber, is seeing that this is an issue and Blue Jays Central is coming out with a whole breakdown on this problem, then other ball clubs are going to start looking at the Toronto Blue Jays and going, huh. Maybe we should steal some bases on them. Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Take a look at this sequence here. Count is 1-0, Jose series on base, boom. This guy takes off, Kirk tries to throw, but he's late, and Siri is already there. Then, two pitches later, the count is 2-1 and one now, and look at this. Chris Bassett is literally looking back at him. He knows that he's about to go. Like, everyone on the field knows he's about to go, but it doesn't matter. Jose Siri takes off, and boom. Now he's at third base. In less than three pitches, Jose Siri went from first to third and he did it without a whole lot of resistance and I think the worst part about that sequence is that the Jays knew what was going on and they just could not do anything to stop it now I'm not going to overreact about this because there is a ton of time to deal with this problem but right now it's exactly that a problem and as the Toronto Blue Jays season continues they're going to need to prove to other teams that it isn't going to be so easy to take a free base but folks let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below thank you so much for watching and as always go Jays go